visitors, whether you're coming to us for the first time, we are regular visitors, all of you are welcome in God's house today. This is our emotional emphasis weekend. And the theme of this weekend is a God who feels our deepest pain, a God who feels our deepest pain. Yesterday, we started by highlighting the fact that um, we are emotional beings created by an emotional God and that emotions give meaning and depth to our lives. Without emotions, life would be a colorless canvas, boring and bland. And Sister Rose in her first presentation shared on how we can raise godly children in an ungodly world, not only by learning how to become emotionally healthy ourselves, but by raising children who are emotionally sound so that we can break that cycle of emotional unwellness that we see so prevalent in our world today. This Sabbath school, I just want to kind of highlight a few things before our next pre presenter comes. And it is that, you know, God indeed does feel our deepest pain. When we feel pain or grief, sometimes there is a sense that no one understands how we feel. And this year has been a very difficult year for all of us. Some of us have lost loved ones, whether um, some of us have lost close family members, and some, have lost, some of us have lost our friend, uh, friends and our, and our acquaintances. And I know that some of us here at Chatham Church have lost our very, very close family members whether through COVID or other sicknesses, accidents and natural cause, causes. At the start of this year, I lost my grandmother and even now I haven't processed um, her death. And so pain is something that as humans, we know all too well. And we've all been exposed to pain um, many times since we were born. And this has been happening to us since the fall of man actually. We experience hurt, we experience disappointment, we experience grief guilt, anger, loss. These are just some examples of some of the emotions that we experience. But this morning, I just want to remind you that we can rest assured that whatever experiences we are going through, whatever pains or hurts we are going through, God experiences them as well. And he knows exactly how we feel. Other humans may not know what it's like to lose somebody or to be sexually abused or to be neglected or to, to be abandoned or deserted or hurt. But I can assure you today that God is a God who feels our deepest pains because whatever happens to us happens to him first. But whilst God has given us emotions, emotions can also be abused or incorrectly used. We are called to rule our emotions rather than allowing our emotions to rule over us. Unruled emotions are what led to the fall when Lucifer allowed envy and pride to get the better of him. Unruled emotions led, led to Cain, Cain murdering his brother Abel. It led, unruled emotions called, caused David to commit adultery. And the list goes on and on. Uh, when we read the Bible, it's full of stories of many people who were unable to master their own emotions. Today, we see a rise in domestic violence, robberies, addictions, wars, divorce rates are at an all-time high, and even mental health. And a lot of these things come about because man has failed to master his emotions. Yes, we live in a fallen world where we are buffeted, left, right, and center. But shall we allow our emotions to be our masters, or will we master our own emotions? So brothers and sisters, this morning, I just want to share, you this, share with you the secret to being spiritually uh, victorious. And I will read from you know, from uh, Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 2, because I believe that as people who are waiting to be translated, if we are waiting to see Jesus, we have to gain victory of our emotions. So Hebrews 12, 1 to 2 says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We have to gain victory over every negative emotion that is in control of us today, if we are ready, if we're getting ready to be translated. And what does the Bible say about emotions? I'm just going to read a couple of verses for you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, 
goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And that was from Galatians 5, 22 to 23. So I want to ask you a question today before our presenter comes. How emotionally healthy are you? And are you emotionally ready for translation? The great controversy started in heaven because of misplaced emotions. Overcoming sin is dependent in many ways on our emotions. Our character, which happens to be the only thing that we will take to heaven, is very much determined by our temperament. In other words, our emotions. Revelations 4, 14, 12 says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. It talks about patience and only such people will be overcomers, those who are patient. I pray that today, if you are struggling with negative emotions, anger, unforgiveness, covetousness, hatred, envy, pride, the list goes on and on. I pray that you give your heart to the Lord today and ask him to take away these emotions from you. And finally, I just want to end with Romans 12, 2. And it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and, uh, and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I pray by the end of today that many of us who may be stuck with negative emotion that's actually affecting our spirituality, that we will choose to have our minds transformed by focusing on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So without further ado, I don't know if Sister Tasha is here now. Um, maybe we should have uh, our next presenter only because she has to leave and then we'll have our special song after that. Is that okay, Sister Tasha? So Sister Rebecca, over to you. Sister Rebecca this morning is going to be giving us a whole different spin on our emotions, explaining to us the wonders of how God has created us as human beings. So I pray that you will all be blessed by our next presentation from Sister Rebecca. Now, some of us may know who Sister Rebecca is. She's a member of the Maidstone Church. She's also um, a medical practitioner. She's a doctor. Um, so she has a background in, um, in mental health and she's currently training to become a GP. She's very passionate about mental health. Those of you that have heard her present at Maidstone Church, I was I'm all, totally blown away but by the, the stuff that she shares about how, how wonderfully God has created us. So I pray that today you will be blessed as you listen to the presentation that um, Sister Rebecca has for us. And Sister Rebecca, thank you so much for accepting our, um, our invitation to come and speak to us today. God bless. Thank you, Sister Vivian. Um, good morning, everyone. It's lovely to be with you and it's very nice to see all of you. Um, it's a pleasure being here. Um, and how exciting that we're having this, um, this whole, whole day or a whole uh, program with uh, the emphasis of emotional health. Um, I think that's, that's brilliant and very important. Um, I will share with you th um, this morning a presentation that I have shared once uh, before at Maidstone Church, I believe, um, a while over a year ago, and it was more on the focus of mental health, but a lot of these principles can also be transferred to emotional health. Um, um, I, is it okay if we uh, bow our heads for another word of prayer before I begin? All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Good morning, Lord. Thank you, God, for being here with us. Thank you for the blessing, the opportunity, and the privilege of being able to meet, even though we're meeting virtually. Um, dear Lord, I pray for you to be with uh, us, be with our minds, be with our hearts. Um, and dear God, please be also with the technical uh, side of things, uh, internet connections, and then everything else in between. Um, Lord, I pray for the people who are here. I pray that you may speak through me, dear God. Um, and Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit may touch us and that this message can be a blessing. And Lord, um, I pray for each person hearing this and people who might hear it in the future. Dear God, I ask that 
you may make the relevant parts um, stand out to each, make this an individual message, dear Lord. I do not know what each person here is going through. I don't know the details of their lives. I don't know the details of their hearts and their minds, their feelings and their thoughts, but dear God, you know them. And I ask that this may impact each person here this morning individually in a very special way. And we pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, so I will share my screen. If anybody at any point wants to say anything, I think I can still see some of you whilst I'm sharing my screen, but in case you're trying to get hold of me and I don't notice, you may need to say something, uh, give a shout and please feel free to do that at any point during the presentation. So let me start sharing my screen. Mm. Are you able to see my, my screen? Yes, we can see them. Okay, great. All right. So, uh, one second. Okay. So that is the first slide. Okay. And I'm also mindful of time. I don't want to overrun. So emotional health, a God of impossibilities. Um, this morning, I, um, there, I'm quite excited to share this with you. Um, I will be focusing from a medical uh, background. I will be focusing on, um, well, actually there's a little summary here. Yes, so I will focus on some brain um, and physiology. So we will be looking a little bit about um, the science of our bodies, our cells, um, and that also is involved in neuroplasticity. And I will explain what these mean to you. And following that, we will uh, reflect on just how powerful our words can be uh, as it relates to this topic. We will touch up quickly and briefly on um, cognitive behavior therapy and how that affects our thoughts and feelings. And then we will discuss a few behavior techniques and a few thought techniques. So um, there is a a few practical there are a few practical tips coming up at the end of this talk um, so it is a reflection on science practical things psychology and also um, of course biblical truth and how um, this relates to us on a spiritual level and how privileged and blessed we are that we have and we have the faith in God and, and there we have a heavenly father that we can run to um, and so let us have a look right so um, there are a few things that I will whiz through because some slides are sort of just pictures and just to exemplify a few things. Um, our brain, this is just for us to start by having uh, an idea of the scale of things that we're talking about. Because um, our brain, we truly are fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, and I, I get amazed the more I study the human body, I, I still can't get um, get enough of it really. Um, so really each part of our brain, you know, it's not just a sort of mushy thing that is kind of uh, soft and gray and, um, and you know, randomly, um, sort of randomly there. No, actually each groove has a function. Each little groove, corner and twist has a function. I think that's quite amazing. And we can see <clears throat> here, for example, then each groove, sub, there's a subdivision further. You see, so every little strand, you know, the larger grooves and also smaller uh, grooves. So each portion really is targeted at each part of our body. So it's, it's quite amazing. And these are microscopically looking. That is a, um, a diagram, a a sketch of what uh, nerve cells supposedly look like and their basic structure and they kind of how they actually connect from one to another. And the important thing here about this slide is just for us to see, um, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but here there is a synapse. Um, and so that is where the tail meets the head of the next neuron. And so the little uh, red arrows is the direction uh, direction in which the information is passing through and it's going along down a certain direction because the cells are able to healthily connect to each other. 
um, and they're able to, to transmit that message. So what is neuroplasticity? Why is this relevant to us? Um, right, so neuroplasticity, I'm going to have to move. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so neuroplasticity is um, the ability of the brain to change continuously throughout an individual's life. Okay, um, so it's not a set fixed thing. That is the first message important for us to highlight on this talk that um, actually our brains, they are actually, in spite of having set places for each body, we, it's also a constantly moving and changing thing as all, all of our body really, all of our cells are very active, interactive, and they're constantly changing. Um, so, and be, so here we, ha we say that behavior, environmental stimuli, thought and emotions may cause a neuroplastic change through activity dependent plasticity. What does that mean? Sort of the more you use a certain, the more you use a certain part of your brain, uh, the more that area will grow, if that makes sense. Um, brain activities associated with a given uh, associated with a given function can be transferred to a different location, the proportion of gray matter can change and the synapses can strengthen or weaken. What does that mean? Again, it just means in other words, in simple words, that the more you use a particular part of your brain, the more that part will grow and the cells there will become more dense in amount. And so that's why people who, for example, play instruments, they have developed that part of the brain related to playing instruments and having that kind of skill. And so their cells there have uh, populated more. They, they, they have uh, replicated several times and so they are strengthened and stronger. Um, right, so I want, uh, now um, another thing that I wanted to mention uh, in relation to this, um, when we ask, you know, when asked what is the smallest particle in the universe, a lot of people say the electrons. Okay, that, that is what we heard. And so we have here a little timeline. Um, in the middle here, we have an atom. Those of us, if we can remember our biology and chemistry classes, physics, etc. cetera, um, you know, that is how an atom looks like. Um, we have the, <clears throat> and we have in the nucleus, okay, which is the little, um, red and, and blue dots. Um, so the, the, the electrons are the black dots around sort of floating and constantly moving around very quickly. However, we found out that inside the nucleus, we have our protons and neutrons, but even within that, we have yet smaller particle, particles and these are called quarks, okay? That's there at the end of the, of the scale right there, quarks. And so um, here, yes, there we go, we can see in yellow, the electrons flying around. In the center, in the nucleus, we have the neutrons and protons. And then the little white and the little white and black dots right there, these are the quarks. Okay. And one and they kind of are little vibrating threads uh, that are really sitting in the center of our atoms. And we know everything really is made of atoms in the universe. And so and so I put to you this morning that actually the smaller particle is the quark and that is what science has learned uh, not very long time ago, um, only a few decades. Um, and interestingly enough, they found out, and this just really blows my mind, that the quark actually vibrates. These are little strings. One of them is sort of uh, facing up, the other one is facing down, and they kind of vibrate with each other. These are kind of, you can imagine them as small little tiny strings of a guitar um, inside the neutron or the proton, and they are constantly vibrating with, with each other, and interestingly, they vibrate at the same speed of sound. And so if we are all made of atoms, and really in the most important element of the atom and the smallest particle known in the universe is the quark, you know, and that vibrates to sound. It tells me that actually everything else can, that, that is really what our universe is about. And again, we can go and reflect on the power of music 
and you know we are now but however i would like to focus on the power of words and as it relates to our mental health our emotional health and our beliefs and our thoughts and so i'm not going to read this slide but um as christians this scientific information that i just gave to you has a different uh a different importance isn't it because we know our lord created the world by speaking things into existence didn't he and uh and so that you know just want to let that sink in a little bit because um yes he spoke things into existence he said let there be light and then at each step so that is a just a copy of genesis chapter one you know and so he everything he said was so and it became it came to be and um and so i wonder does that what does that say about uh the power of our words now um nowadays as we live our lives here in this since then the earth has obviously come through many changes um we have fallen in sin um however we are still the same creations of god and and then verse 26 in chapter one says god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and so how how was god god was perfect wasn't it and so actually initially god created us perfectly in a beautiful wonderful way uh, we have uh since then unfortunately um come to sin however um that was the original plan and we everything that we see in the universe was created by the power of sound was created by god's voice and his his uh words and uh and then it also come uh, helps me to reflect on james chapter 3 uh, verses 5 to 10 um you know where uh, again i won't read this everything but it you know here was a reflection on how the tongue is so powerful you know and it says that you know animals birds and reptiles can be tamed however no human being can tame the tongue uh it is rest uh, it is a restless evil full of deadly poison with the tongue we praise our lord but we also give curse to human beings um, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing um, and you know again i think that's really very interesting because we can it is for us to reflect on how powerful it is and i will show you uh, some more evidence of um of scientific sort of explanation as to how uh how these things can impact the rest of our body as well and so what can we what have we concluded so far what have we learned thus far in these first uh, couple of slides that I've shared with you? First of all, our brains can change. This in itself to a lot of people can be quite mind blowing. Uh, some of us feel as though we may be stuck in a certain way forever. Some of us might, have you ever had people labeling you with a certain, certain description, a certain quality? And perhaps they've been labeling you with this really since childhood. Um, people have been calling you such and you know, when they think of you, oh, they associate you with being such or being this or being that. Well, actually you don't have to be like that for the rest of your life. And God is very much in the business of changing and molding our characters throughout our entire life as we continue to progress from glory to glory. And the second uh, is that our original state was perfect. And so we know we're not perfect at the moment. <clears throat> we know we've, uh, we're full of sin and we're a fallen nature. Um, however, we understand that actually it's possible to change and God wants to mold us and continue improving us every day and he doesn't give up and that is beautiful. And, and the other thing is that we help each other along that journey, isn't it? We improve each other, we help each other along the way and uh, we have a huge, um, we have a huge, what's the word, a responsibility, but also privilege of doing that. And as we, um, we influence each other, what we say can not only affect ourselves and our own thoughts, but it can affect um, other people uh, around us. 
and uh, again I actually cannot see you guys so if there is any problem with connection if you cannot hear me or anything if you unmute yourselves and give me a shout that would be great right so how does this affect our emotional health exactly um, let's think about some of you might know or might have heard of cognitive behavior therapy CBT very popular and used by many psychologists psychiatrists counselors therapists um, it's basically this is the main basis and main principle and the main idea of CBT is that there is that loop and this constant link that our thoughts affect our behavior our behavior affects how we feel and therefore that will change our thoughts and so it is you know you can really start at any point in this circle because one thing really affects the other and you can even sort of go the other way around going anti-clockwise it also stands true um, this is very powerful too for anybody who has not come across this principle before i invite you to um to reflect on this because um so let's give an example i am feeling oh i'm feeling down today i woke up feeling down uh, and actually i woke up thinking uh let's start by from thoughts i woke up thinking that i don't feel like getting up and going to work today um and therefore i will kind of drag myself out of bed that's my behavior now i drag myself out of bed and i don't really smile at people very much when i get to work that's my behavior and so the fact that i have behaved and my body has behaved in that way makes me feel down and therefore because I feel down, then I will, it will confirm my initial thought. Oh yeah, so it is a bad day. And indeed, I'm not enjoying this very much today, you know? And so, and then again, the loop continues. Or if we start from feelings, I suddenly feel something. I feel a tightness in my chest and a, a discomfort. I feel quite uncomfortable, unwell. I feel anxious, I feel worried. And so this leads me to think, oh, what's happening then why am i feeling this way and so my thoughts go suddenly start thinking what's going wrong what's happening and so yeah okay so i'm feeling i'm feeling down because of somebody told me something yesterday and you know i didn't like it that's why and therefore my behavior will follow and so on so if i if i move on i will show you an example so actually what what the idea is is that it is hard to control our feelings and thoughts okay i would not lie to you it is possible however um they are hard and so the place here that we can possibly try and target best would probably be at the behavior end even though it's also hard to target behaviors however it is easier and relatively to the others okay so we will give you a few tips and then uh, some information as to how we can also go about doing this so some behavior techniques, okay? So if we change that in the wheel, if we change any of the three, it just affects and it's, it affects everything else. It affects the entire cycle. So the, the, the proposition is to, to try and target behaviors because um, humans, as humans, we find that a bit easier. And so, uh, for example, one thing is that very well-known principle of discipline, which we all have heard from a very young age. And it... Um, it is a struggle and a fight, but it is possible. And so, because the more we actually kind of, you know, fake it till you make it. And if we kind of force ourselves to do something, suddenly that will become easier and it will make more sense and it will make me feel better. And again, I will show you at the brain level why this is so and how it happens. Now, another thing that I would love to share with you is called something called proprioception. What is proprioception? How does this help me? changing my behavior in order to affect positively affect my my feelings and my thoughts so proprioception is simply is a sense of self movement and body position okay so um what does that mean so at the moment i'm sitting on a chair and even if i close my eyes i'm aware and i know that i am sitting down and i'm not sort of hanging upside down or you know so actually there are parts of our bodies that allow us to help so this is uh, something that encodes distinct types of information, okay? For example, limb velocity, 
movements, the load on a limb, and it creates an overall representation of the body position, movement, and acceleration. For example, when you're inside an elevator, if you, whatever, regardless of what you pressed in that button, once, when, which floor you pressed once you walked into the elevator, if it suddenly starts moving in the wrong direction, even though in your head, I've told the elevator to go up, I wanna to go to the second floor. However, if suddenly it starts going down instead, even if you had your eyes closed, you would know and you will feel the elevator going down. Okay, so that is just an example of how our body is able to, um, that our body can relate and, and how we experience our, our external world. And so, for example, this is very true with gymnasts. Um, they, in mid-air, they can spin their bodies in several different ways. And this is really proprioception working at its, at its peak and at its best because really small, tiny, movements they are always the gymnasts are always aware exactly where their foot is or where you know their thigh is at any point in during that maneuver uh, and so here we can see that actually we have three we physically and anatomically have cells in parts of our bodies that allow us to encode this information how do we feel it so we have three pretty much we have here we have joint so we have some receptors in the joint we have some receptors within inside the muscle and we have some receptors inside the tendon okay and so these allow us to actually experience position movement and velocity of our bodies why am i why are we talking about this you know it could be a it's not, it might sound a bit too technical um and here again we just have a picture because these sensors they are connected to small little tiny nerve fibers and these, all, these nerve fibers, they come up and connect directly to the brain. And so they tell your brain where you're at. And this is how we actually feel and experience this fr from the muscle into the brain and we notice it. Um, so why, why, why is this relevant? Okay, because again, behavior, okay? Even though, so let's think about this now. Let's go back to our example of waking up in the morning and not feeling like going to work. Um, that's where you wake up thinking that and feeling that, okay? Well, I don't really want, you know, we know that it's probably not going to be very nice and beneficial for me to go about my day that way. And so, um, how can, can I do anything practical to change that? Can I do anything practical to feel better? Well, yes, I can. I can stand tall and I can put a smile on my face. Just simply doing that is already our the little receptors that i just showed you they're sending signals to our brain oh actually i'm feeling i'm feeling good i'm, I'm not feeling as bad as i thought so because i decided that's how i behaved i my brain interpreted the information as if saying that things are good things are well and starts automatically then thinking more positive thoughts and so if I sort of, you know, walk around like this and, I'm, you know, and then I go to work dragging my feet and, you know, and crunching forward like this and just not feeling and having a frown on my face and just my face just starts feeling heavy. My shoulders are heavy and therefore my brain is noticing all this and picking up on these signals and, and then it con it's confirming, oh, yeah, something is wrong something is not right and i'm not feeling well and so that that um nourishes that loop and feeds it feeds that loop um does that is that making sense i want to try and see you guys a little bit because um i don't want to be talking completely alone and i just um are there any questions up to this point and is there is this resonating? Can anybody put hands up if it's resonating with anyone or if, if it's making sense to anybody at all? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes, yes. we can hear you. People can hear, that's great. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, thank you. So, so can I control my brain then? In uh, a way. My question is, mm -hmm. You know, my gestures or something like that, does it control the brain or can my brain control my uh, gestures? Can you, can you say that again? Can your brain control what? So, 
can I control my brain through, you know, the little gesture that I do? In a way, yes. So in a way, that is um, kind of what we're saying. Our, our body should be, should be subject to our mind. And so basically we decide, we have, there are decisions that we have to make. You know, God has beautifully given us the power of free will. And so um, by having this information and this knowledge, this beautiful knowledge that God has given us through his creation and his and science, we are aware now that actually um, I have this possibility of doing this and therefore I'm going to decide to stand tall and smile and speak in a lovely tone to people. And so this will trick my brain into th certain things. And so yes, we are, it is possible, brother, to trick uh, our brain and in a way control our brain to a certain extent because God has enabled us to do so because he has created us in a wonderful way and he knew we would need help at many points in our lives where we would be feeling down he gave us lots of resources in our body to help us that and of course we will move on to the spiritual aspect of it at the end of this presentation does, does that make sense does that answer your question makes a lot of sense there's okay. a the british have a saying a stiff upper lip mm. so hence when you as you said gesture and his question re reverse question mm. once you posture up it helps to um enhance what you're trying to portray mm. yes Yes, and, um, and indeed, you know, it, it just, just by simple movements, taking deep breaths when you're anxious, those deep breaths, holding it in for seven seconds, you know, breathing for four, hold it in for seven, breathe out for seven, and suddenly you will start tricking your brain into thinking, I'm really calm, I'm actually feeling very peaceful and nice, you know, and so um, even though you suddenly you're hit with feelings and thoughts of anxiety, worry, uh, you know, and, and just being stressed, but if then, well, let me use certain tools that my God has given me in my body. I will close my eyes, take deep breaths, and I'll do that for five minutes. And I, so we are deciding, we have the free, we have the power of choice. Okay. And so if I, if I continue here, I will show you, um, Yes, so behavior, there are different ways um, that we can, so through our words, our actions, our movements, and our decisions, okay? If we change these things, we can change some of our emotions, guys, we can. And how do we use each one of these? So our words and our actions, again, we have, there is discipline that comes in. And again, that's another word for free will in a way, okay? And, and when we change our movement, that through proprioception is how we, we would experience that. And again, um, through our thoughts. And thoughts now, let's target that one, okay? That it's also possible to target our thoughts and there are things that the Lord has revealed to us about this. Different thought types. We have toxic thoughts and we have healthy thoughts. Um, so let's see, okay. I might have to speed up a little bit because I think I'm running. I don't, I'm supposed to be not to talk for too long. So um, <clears throat> let's just see, to toxic thoughts, okay? What is the problem? What do we mean by toxic, toxic thoughts? We mean negative thoughts, negative words. Um, and, um, and what happens? What's the problem with them? Well, the problem is they shift the body's focus to protection and survival and reduces our ability to process and think with wisdom, okay? And so imagine that, you know, you think, I'm late. Oh, I'm late, and I'm angry about myself for being late, and I'm rushed and stressed now. And so you will just dash down the corridor, doing your things, and not really realizing what's happening left and right of you, you know? And these are simple, very simple, excuse me for the simplicity and silliness of these examples, but truly we kind of get clouded. Our frontal lobe gets clouded because a different part of the brain gets activated and therefore we don't really think right. We don't think correctly. It reduces our ability to have wisdom. Maybe I'm so stressed and so rushed that 
uh, an elderly lady just hit her foot somewhere right next to me and I don't even realize it. I don't see it. I don't even empathize with her because I'm just having, I'm just in this sort of toxic zone that is the unhealthy side where God doesn't want us to really inhabit and stay in that place. Um, in, Timothy, in Second Timothy, God says he has give, not given us a power of a spirit of fear, but of power, of love and of a sound mind, isn't it? We know about this. And so fear and love are kind of these opposite poles always, always. And so God inhabits in the love, sort of love zone. And that's where he wants us to be, where all good, where all things are, are good, positive and beautiful in the love zone or the love side. And that's what we call the healthy thoughts. Anything else that's different, we call those toxic thoughts and they affect and make our brain actually act and think in a different way completely. And so these toxic thoughts, they're not healthy and they will cloud us. It will make it harder for us to hear God, to listen to his Holy Spirit and act upon it. We want to be in the love zone most of the time and not in the fear zone because really all that is bad and negative kind of stems from fear in a way, you know, from fear, fear and pride really go hand in hand and they are completely opposite to what love and self-denial really represents. And so just a little quick depiction of, again, those nerve cells that we saw at the beginning, these are kind of real ones looking under an electron microscope. So the orange bits, these are our, the head, the, nucle the nucleus, the cell, okay, the, the, the head and the body of the cell and the little purple things are the tails and the connections that they have in between them. So just an example of, you know, toxic thoughts, they can actually diminish and kill some of our neurons, some of our brain cells, okay? Um, they will not be uh, healthy and thriving. And so some of them may die and fade away and you will just have less of them, a gap here or a gap there. We, we will find gaps in the brain and we do see uh, less density of neurons in people with uh, dementia, for example, in people of older age the very elderly, we do see these things and it comes back to neuroplasticity. So what are healthy thoughts then? Well, God already told us in Proverbs, pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healthy to the bones. Why did God say that? Well, because he created our bodies. He knows. He knows all about this physiology, the physics and the chemistry behind it. And it's true because it affects absolutely um, how we feel and how we think and that again going back to the power of our words and that the smallest particle in the universe is the quark and so there is a quote uh, Barbara O'Neill she's a naturopath some of you guys might know her she's Adventist and she says we have no say on the first thought that comes to our head but we have total say on the thoughts after that so any subsequent one subsequent thoughts we can affect and impact and so interestingly, what did I want to say here about the path of least resistance? Basically, so um, the more we use a certain pathway in our brain, the thicker and stronger those connections will get. If you remember the synapse, when one nerve cell sort of connects to the other one, they also multiply and replicate and they, be and they become larger in number. For example, the more you use, if you do some workout in the gym and I will be doing bicep curls, well, my biceps will grow, okay? Because those um, cells are replicating and becoming larger in number. It, it is similar. It is a similar kind of, it's what they say, flex your cortex. And so the part of your brain that you use most will grow, okay? So what does this mean, for example? What's easier? Imagine today is a Sabbath. In the afternoon, you want to go for a walk with your family. Um, and I do believe that this is still allowed. Uh, with this whole coronavirus pandemic, I am really struggling to keep up with the rules, new rules and regulations all the time. But I, I'm pretty sure that we're still allowed to go out for walks with our family members. And so you come to the edge of a, um, of a mini, mini forest, the back of your house, somewhere that you might have it. And we are privileged to have quite a few of these in Kent. Um, and so what's easier? What are you going to choose? Are you going, when you look at it, are you going to walk? Are you going to sort of uh, start, you know, going into and through the thick bushes and trees? 
and trying to squeeze in between the gaps or are you going to just walk where there is an open path and where actually the floor is already kind of paved a little bit for you? I can imagine <laughs> what people will be answering most likely is that we will probably just walk down that little path, isn't it? Um, we will probably walk along the road where the path has been opened and it's just easier to stroll down rather than getting, you know, taking out some tools and start chopping a few tree branches and really opening up a new way is always harder. Okay. So this is that that's the same idea, the same principle, because our brain really is a little bit like a tree because there are branches in different ways. And so uh, we can, you can think about it as a forest full of trees. The trees are the neurons. Um, the trees are the neurons. And, um, and so when we, sorry, did anybody have a question there? Um, I think there was a question coming through. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, so you can think of our brain as a forest and our neurons, our brain cells as the trees. Okay. And so I'll show you here, the more I use a certain path, the more that path will widen and widen and just become easier. And so the electro stimulus, the electric stimulus and signal will be able to go through that path very quickly because it is a dense, thick pathway. And so if I make myself used to thinking this way, behaving in this way more and more, it will be easier and it'll just become second nature. And the next time I do it, it will be much easier to do. And so here I will, um, I will uh, show you an example. So that's our normal sort of uh, cells. Yes, and then, did anybody want to say something? So the, the, the orange bits, these are the heads of this sort of our brain cells, okay? And so let's say if I think about a certain direction all the time, I will have a pathway like that going horizontally. If I think a different way, then the cells, do you see how they change? they actually can change shape. And depending on which direction I'm thinking, those cells multiply and become thicker and stronger, producing a pathway, a physical, tangible pathway inside our brains. So as we come to a close, I would like to just also introduce, um, introduce another concept, a concept called, um, a concept called superposition. <clears throat> And this, this concept of superposition is very interesting that I would also like to, um, to share with you. Um, basically, we can, choose, we can choose what we're thinking about, okay? And I'm inviting us today, I'm inviting us this morning to reflect. And when this whole topic of emotional health, um, it is important for us to be in touch with our emotions, guys. It is, there is no need to... There is no need to um, uh, neglect them or be in denial of them. That actually isn't very helpful. But for us to think about what we are thinking about, notice, notice what it is that we're thinking about. Um, and, you know, so, if, and so in 2 Corinthians, God tells us, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of God. That's what we mean by superposition. In other words, basically, superposition is, a, is a, there is a, a, a very important temporary state when a thought quickly enters our mind and we have a few seconds to decide what to do with that thought. Okay. And so, it is important to notice and reflect, noticing what's going on in our heads. What are we really thinking about? Because, um, so basically every few seconds, our frontal lobe is swept through and thoughts are built into our non-conscious mind. Okay. So that we have here in the front is really what's happening here and now. It is like, you know, a little telly that is just showing what's happening. What am I experiencing now? And then with time, this gets, um, recorded into our long-term memory back in the other posterior, more posterior areas of the brain. Depending on how we, on our attitude towards each thought that comes through, 
which we really have, I don't know what those figures are, but it's really a thousand thoughts per second. Um, I mean, we, whatever we decide to do with those thoughts, we'll decide which part of the brain this will be stored and what, what we're going to make of it. Okay. And so it is very important. So get it right before it goes into your subconscious. So what, 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 what do we mean? What do we mean by that? So somebody called your name, you were at school. Okay. If you're a, a child, a teenager, somebody called you, uh, Oh, you're stupid. Somebody at school tells you that. Well, you have a few seconds to decide what to do with that information that just was just given to you. You can either feel really bad and sad and say, I am stupid. I probably am. You know, there must be a reason why they're saying that. What have I done? What's wrong with me? That's terrible. Or you can think, I wonder why, what has led this person to say this right now to me? What's going on behind their mind and their thoughts in this situation that led them to say this right now? So if we don't take it personal, if we try and take a step back and look above the situation and try to really reflect and process it in a healthy way, this will have a great, great, huge impact, particularly with um, certain, uh, certain things and truths that have been, and things that statements that have been, people have been telling us our entire lives. Um, Sister Nicola has a question. Yes, please, sister. Oh, it's, um, it's, it's Jonathan. Uh, oh, morning, hi. Everyone. Morning, Hello. Jonathan. Morning. Uh, my question is, so you see like the, uh, the fight or flight hormones. Yeah. Do you think, um, so like when God created man, like, did he create us with those hormones still? Like, would we have needed fight and flight hormones if we were like perfect beings from before? Like if like Adam and Eve, do you, do you feel that they would have needed those hormones? Or is, are they just natural? Yes, God, I believe God absolutely intended to create us with our fight, fight and flight hormones and that they are healthy and helpful to us. Um, for example, in, you know, when we feel pain, when, when something is hurting us, harming us in, in any way, it is, they are protective mechanisms that actually God, uh, I do believe God created those protective mechanisms for our good and for our benefit. Okay, thank you. No problem. No problem. Yeah, raising hands really helps because I can see if anybody raises hands, like I can't see your faces, but I actually can see if somebody raises a hand, I get a no notification. I have one question, if you don't mind. Yes. So I can control my brain, but my question is, can someone else control my brain too? So yeah, I think this is what we were talking about now. Um, basically what other people say I will show you, I will show, there was, there's a little um, diagram and scheme at the end of this that actually shows us how, um, so let's think, how can a person control, control me, for example? Well, through the five senses that we have, we experience the world around us through five senses. So the only ways that the people would be able to control us would be in these five ways, which is sight, um, hearing, touching, uh, so our, our vision, our hearing, our taste, our touch, and our smell. These are the five sensory informations that are coming into our bodies. And these, some people call the five avenues of the five windows of the soul, okay? And so people might have, you know, maybe they, somebody punched you or you know somebody or somebody said so you felt that ow you feel it or or somebody said something really negative to you they spoke words uh, th toxic words to you they spoke negativity they and and so what happens these things get processed we feel it through our the sensory five sensory um means that we have in our body they get processed they travel to our brain and they do produce uh, physical substance there okay so let's say through physics through waves this enters our ears and our ear has a really beautiful way of picking up neurons and, sen and, sen and sensory sensory information that will transform that 
into proteins that will be released inside our brain. And these proteins produce more or less cells in one or other particular part of the brain. Does that make sense? And so that's why this superposition slide is important because then that's when I can decide, okay, I heard something really negative. Somebody called me names. Somebody just punched me for whatever reason it was. How am I going to interpret that? Yes, my body felt it. However, I can choose which part of the brain this information will be stored into. Does that make sense? So I can interpret, I can translate it. Whatever I see and I experience in my environment around me, I have the privilege of being able to translate and interpret in my own way. And even if we just kind of force ourselves to do that diligently, even though if maybe we don't believe it very much, just tell yourself, it's okay, she didn't mean it. She didn't mean it. Maybe it was an accident. Believe me, you will already feel better. And, um, and this information will harm you, harm you less. Okay, so I'm just, I hope that answers your question, brother. I'm just going to move on because I'm, I'm mindful of time. I might have to skip a few things. Uh, I mean, Proverbs 23 tells us, you know, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And again, this is God. It supports everything we're talking about at the moment. Um, and so here, here is a, a little, a little slide. Um, so actually that we, we found, what are we saying really that we can, as, as brother Revo mentioned, we can actually change our brains. Can we, does that, how does that happen? Uh, well, neuroplasticity, as we mentioned, and we can also, we have a power of changing our DNA. The bottom line there says our decisions can change our DNA. Really? How's that possible? How is that actually, you know, from a chemical biological level, how is that possible? It's already some of the things I've mentioned. So here we go, a little diagram of what I just said. A thought or an information comes through to me, I hear something, then hormones are released. Hormones and neurotransmitters are released into the fluid. Our body, as we know, 85% water. We have already had talks about this in the past. And so, these hormones suddenly are released and they start floating around. My cells, my, my nerve cells, let's say my brain cells, my neurons, they bathe in this fluid. This fluid is filled with, let's say, adrenaline, okay? Because somebody just punched me and I, that was the information I received. It's bathed in, this, in these hormones. Now, the cell soaks this up, soaks up the components of this fluid and starts building their own proteins. Different kinds of Different proteins build different shapes and different sizes of neurons. And therefore, dendrites will be formed. What are the dendrites? These are the little arms and the tails of the neurons, okay? So let's say if I think lots of positive thoughts, I will be building lots of dendrites that are going towards the right side. But if I think lots of negative thoughts, let's say I will be building lots of dendrites going the other way. And so I, in this way, I'm kind of, that's how our brain, the neuroplasticity is made. And that's how the shape of our, the trees inside our brain forest, they are changing and adapting with time, depending on whatever we are receiving and hearing. And so a thicker pathway will be made this way if I decide to think more positive thoughts, because physically, a physical substance is a mental real estate is built, is formed. And and shaped into this direction and so it will be easier. So the more you go to the gym, the easier it is to go to the gym. The more I decide to wake up at five in the morning every day, change and exercise before I go to work, the more, the easier it will become because your brain is accustomed to it because you've built that, you've built those neuronal pathways uh, in time, okay? And so we have a few conclusions and then a few Bible verses just and quotations from the spirit of prophecy just before we finish off. I aim to finish in less than five minutes. Um, so, again, to what we started off this uh, talk by saying, um, some people have felt, received labels um, over time in life that have um, made them uh, labels that they disliked and that they did not enjoy and that they probably don't agree and it makes them perhaps resent those people or anything that you might have experienced negative in your life before. Well, God is telling us this morning that actually you can be different. The Lord 
would love to transform our characters from glory to glory. We do not need to be the same forever. We have gone through a few practical tips this morning of how making use of and taking, taking advantage of the beautiful physiology and biochemistry that God has created this with, we can have an impact on these things and we can use our free will. And so it is not who you are, okay? It is who we perhaps have become over time. Remember, God created us perfectly in Genesis through the power of his word. And so we also can, we can change. He, we were originally designed perfect and, um, and our brains can indeed change and adapt, okay? If something was wired in, we can wire it out. Oh, I'm a person who eats junk food, you know? I, no, well, you know, that's not who you are. You've over time learned and, and, and adapted and, and took up this habit, but you don't need, that's not something you need to do forever. Or I'm a person who, I'm, I'm, a depre I'm depressed. Uh, you know, people just label me as down, depressed and anxious um you know i'm a i'm a just a, a stressed head i'm a stress head a lot of people you know can give you that label you're a stress head not read no you're not you've become over time because of certain things that you've gone through in your life you might have adapted this and developed it so if it was wired into your brain you can absolutely wire it out and i hope this can be a very liberating and freedom giving word that is reaching us this morning let's take responsibility for our thoughts okay let's grow our pathways in the right direction let's flex our cortex just like we if we want to increase a certain muscle we can definitely increase certain parts of our brains all right <clears throat> and deuteronomy uh, 30 19 says i have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live Okay, and um, we know this quotation from Philippians. Why was God telling us these things? Again, because he knew, he knew, he created your body. He knew exactly what he was talking about. Let us, um, let us reflect on all things that are noble, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are of good report, you know, and that is why, because it is just physically healthier for us. And so this morning, I invite you to think, perhaps, how does this message impact my practical life? How does this change anything? That person you've been meaning to forgive, the sadness you might have been wanting to overcome, the resentment you're tired of feeling, the fear you would like to get rid of, the anger that burns you inside, a new habit you would like to implement, perhaps, a part of your character that you would like to change, a new person you want to be by God's power, through his strength, through his enabling of his Holy Spirit, not only he, it is possible, he, and even if you don't feel like it, he says that he will give us the will and, and to do. And so even if you don't feel like it, just go to God and tell him, Lord, I don't even feel like changing, but I probably should. And Lord, I don't feel like forgiving that person. Lord, can you please give me the desire of forgiving them? And then the next step, actually enable me to forgive them. Help me to achieve that, dear Lord, please. Because I can see you have made me in a wonderful, wonderful way. And so Jesus is the one who can do this for us. Yes, there are certain practical tips that we can make use of. However, all of this is really completely pointless and useless if it is not done through the power of Jesus Christ through his saving blood we have a possibility of being rescued from sins and so he tells us to come to him take his yoke because he is gentle and humble in heart and we will find rest his yoke is easy and his burden is light and um, this is the very last slide and I, I uh, sister Vivian I don't um, I think this is exactly the topic of this um, this weekend of this weekend this emotional uh, emotional health emphasis and I don't know you probably you might have already shared this quote uh, yesterday evening when you started or at any point but this I just find it so beautiful and impactful and it ties in perfectly with what we're talking about that is a God who feels our deepest pain 
um, Spirit of Prophecy tells us that in Ministry of Healing. Let me read that. Um, he who took humanity upon himself knows how to sympathize with the sufferings of humanity. Not only does Christ know every soul and the peculiar needs and trials of that soul, he knows all the circumstances that chaff and perplex the spirit. So he does feel our deepest pain. His hand is outstretched in pitying tenderness to every suffering child. Those who suffer most have most of his sympathy and pity. He is touched with the feeling of our infirmities and he desires us to lay our perplexities and troubles at his feet and to leave them there. And so this morning, my prayer is that we may be able to do that. In Jesus' name, I pray that we may be able to understand and take this message to our hearts and, 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 and just to thank God that he's a God who feels, he's a God of emotions. He sympathizes with us and Jesus came to feel in his skin how it's like, how the human experience is like so he can sympathize with us even more. And so he's asking us to throw and cast our fears far away, so far that we cannot see them anymore and we lose sight of them and forget and leave them there. Thank you very much. Wow. Um, I'm not someone that gets easily emotional, but right now, I feel emotional because I don't know about you. I mean, we all come from different walks of life. We've been hurt in so many ways. We're dealing with so much. And sorry, I didn't plan to do this. And just to read this presentation, I don't know about you, but it gives me hope. Amen. That Amen. it doesn't matter what life throws at us. God understands our pain. And most importantly, he's... Um, is willing to heal us from whatever we're going through. Sister Rebecca, thank you so much for allowing the Lord to use you so much this morning. Um, mm. And thank you for coming to us. And I pray that um, all of you that are hearing this presentation this morning have found something that resonates with you, something that can get healing from, from, from this presentation. Um, God invites us to, to bring whatever um, hurts us um, to his feet so thank you Absolutely. and I know Amen. you have to rush off thank you so much for just taking time away from your schedule and um, you know spending this morning with us so thank you so much sister Rebecca God bless you praise God praise God yes thank you thank you God bless Is that, um, well um, if you would like us to if can I say a short prayer to close this yes please is that yes. okay and I know that you um, have other things to move on to in terms of uh, praise and singing and the other parts of the program. Um, let us pray. Dear Lord, God, thank you. Dear Lord, thank you so much because you do not want us to remain in our sinful position. However, you still love us unconditionally and you hug us and you embrace us, Lord. You accept us and you meet us where we are. Thank you so much, dear Lord, for being such a beautiful father. And thank you for being a father who has emotions and feelings. And thank you for creating us in such a wonderful, marvelous way. Dear Lord, I pray for every single person listening to this message. Lord, I ask that that you make this message very individual to them and that it may raise, resonate differently with each person, Lord, to target whatever need they have in their lives right now and in the lives of their loved ones and in their circle of influence. Dear Lord, help us to be a light in this world. Help us to realize that we have information to share mm -hmm. from your word and from the spirit of prophecy. And these are good news we have so much good news to share and the world needs it right now desperately and so lord please help us to be a light shining in the world lord empower us to go out and share this message with others to share lord these beautiful truths and so the, and also please help us to put these into practice in our own personal and daily lives Thank you, dear Lord, for everything. And thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 
Thank you so much, Sister Rebecca. And God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. And uh, before we move into our lesson summary, I hope you've all been blessed by that presentation, everyone. I know it's very quiet and uh, it is one that takes contemplation and reflection. And as we continue to reflect on these messages for today, may we ask God to really um, work out a change in our own lives. And before we go into our next service, which is our lesson summary, I'm going to invite um, Sister Tasha, I don't know who's giving us a special item, uh, item of music at this point. Uh, we'll have a special item and then we will have the lesson summary following that. Okay, so is Sister Ina available? She's gonna be blessing us with an item. Yes. Amen. Um, now I'm going to sing one song in total, I'm, I'm Not Alone. That you will be with me when I'm standing in the fire, I will not be overcome through the valleys of the shadow. I will not fear, I am not alone, I am not alone, you will go before me, you will never leave me, I am not alone, I am not alone, you will go before me, you will In the midst of deep sorrow, I see your light is breaking through. The dark of night will not overtake me. I am pressing near to you. Lord, you fight my every battle, and I will not fear. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am Redeem me, you call me as your own. You amaze me, redeem me. You call me as your own. You amaze me, redeem me. You call me as your own. You amaze me, redeem me. You call me as your own. You're my strength, you're my defender, you're my refuge in the storm. Through these trials, you've always been faithful, you bring healing to my soul. I am not alone. I am not alone, you will go before me, you will never leave me, I am not alone, I am not alone, you will go before me, you will never leave me, I am not 
alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. I am not alone. I am not alone. You will go before me. You will never leave me. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for